What's going on everyone? Today I'm gonna to show you how to use generative AI to turn horizontal video into vertical videos. So check this out. We have a clip from Star Wars and we're turning it into a vertical video. Just like that, nice and easy, turning it into a vertical video. So let me show you how to do it. So we have a clip here from Star Wars and we're just gonna bring it onto our timeline. Now by default, this is gonna turn into a wide sequence because that's how the video shot. But we wanna use a vertical sequence. That's what we're aiming for. So we'll go up to sequence, we'll go to sequence settings and we'll make this frame 1080 by 1920. We want it to be a nine by 16 frame. Now, one thing that I will say is that this video does have bars, black bars on the top and bottom here, as you can see, and we don't want that to be the case. So the way that we're gonna turn that off is we're just gonna go into effects and use the crop tool here. We'll drag this onto our video and we just need to crop. You can see we need to crop this top and bottom. And I happen to know that if we crop, crop the top by 12 and the bottom by 12%, it'll get rid of those black bars there. So now we have the video, plays out great, but we wanna add with generative fill to the top and bottom. So how do we do this? Well, make sure, first of all, that you have a clip from a film or from your footage that the camera is not moving. If the camera is moving, it will not work. Also, if you have movement going from over the top here or over the bottom here, it will not work. The reason this clip works is because all of the motion's in the middle of the frame. So it's gonna make this work perfectly. So how do we do it? Well. Click on some part in your video and you'll go to this button here. This is the export frame button. So click on that and we'll just call this frame and we'll export this as a PNG and we're gonna choose where that goes and we'll just put it in our folder here and hit okay. So now we've exported this image with this transparency here. And what we need to do now is we need to bring this into Photoshop beta, and we need to create an image that's the same size as our sequence. So we'll have a width of 1080 and a height of 1920, and we'll hit create. So what we'll do is we'll go to our finder and we'll navigate to the frame that we exported, and we'll just drag that in. So now you can see that it fits perfectly into our image, but again, we have this empty space and that's what we wanna fill here. So what we need to do is we need to select this transparency so that we can actually generate an image there. So the easiest way to do this is by go hovering over your image here, holding down command on your Mac and clicking. That's gonna highlight this middle part here. Now, if you go to select and you click inverse, it'll actually select the outsides here. So now we have the top and the bottom selected. Now we can click generative fill and we'll just hit generate. And the AI is gonna do its work to create a new background for this image. Now here's where our problem results. Now a lot of people suggest that this is the way to do it, to, to select this and then inverse, but I find that you get a lot of issues. So we're gonna do this a different way. I actually think the best way to do this is to use your rectangular box tool here and highlight a little bit of your frame and then the top. And we're gonna start with just the top. Now, if we generate here, the key is that we highlighted a little over our frame. That's gonna give us a smooth blending between our frame here and our new generated frame. So let's see what this comes up with for an image. Look at that, much better options here. These look really nice. So we'll go with that one. And now we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom. We wanna select a little of our frame and then go down to the bottom and generate. And I find that this tends to work a lot better than doing that inverse selection option, which I see a lot of people recommend. I've had a lot of issues with that method and I think this works a lot better. So now we have a couple options here and I'm really liking the way this one looks. So look at this, if we remove our frame, you can see we have this new background. And because there's no camera movement, there's no movement here, which is fine. It'll still feel like video, even though it's just an image. So now what we need to do is we're just gonna turn off our frame layer we're gonna turn off our background layer and we're gonna export this as a PNG. So we'll go file, we'll go export, quick export as PNG. We'll call this new frame background. And then we can head back to Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's jump into Premiere and we're gonna to go to our finder and we're just gonna drag in the new backgrounds that we've made. You can also import that to bring that in as well. So we'll bring that right over our clip. So watch what you can see here. You can now see that we have a perfect background for our footage, seamless because of the way that we selected our clip. It looks really nice. So now let's play that and see how it looks. Beautiful, 
we've made this old 1970s footage into vertical modern footage. You could post as a reel or an Instagram story. It works super smoothly. So that's how you could do it. You could do it with any clip, but again, the key is gonna be that there's no camera movement because that'll kind of break the, the illusion here. And you also don't want any motion over the top part here and over the bottom here. That allows it to feel as though this is all real and actually happening. And I also find that, let's say this might help sell it. We'll add an adjustment layer and we'll slap that on top and we can kind of color correct these together. If we use the um, window, we'll go to Lumetri Color and I like to throw a little vignette on there. It makes it feel like it's really all part of the same scene, just really subtle and it looks really nice. So that's how you make horizontal video, vertical video using Adobe Premiere, I'm sorry, using Adobe Photoshop beta and generative fill. Now, if you enjoyed this, I have a bunch of other videos about Adobe Photoshop beta generative fill. I'll teach you how to remove objects from an image. I'll teach you how to add objects to an image, a whole bunch more. So go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and go ahead and check those out. And otherwise, we'll check you back in the next one. Thanks, guys.